fact, when you look at the vaccine being rolled out in the UK, why does the US not have access to the Pfizer vaccine before presumably mid-2021? Well, we, we know that the, the British were using a rolling basis where they were of, for the regulatory review, that as data came in, they were constantly reviewing it, whereas the US FDA works a little bit differently. They are now reviewing all of that data and then are going to be meeting imminently to make a, a decision regarding an emergency use authorization. But you have to remember that even in the even in the UK, every in anywhere, it's going to be priority groups that get vaccinated first. So it's going to take some time for the general public, the person of average risk, to be able to have access to this vaccine. So it's going to probably be mid 2021 before we see countries get a sizable amount of their general population vaccinated. Healthcare workers, nursing home residents, that's probably going to come in, in the winter. Uh, and then we're looking at spring and summer for the rest of the population. It's going to be a very long process and going to take some time to cross that herd immunity threshold. But if we can get vulnerable populations protected quickly, that is going to be something that hospitals will immediately feel. Uh, how will the U.S. tackle COVID-19 differently under the Biden administration? Well, what we've seen so far articulated in the transition team's plans is a much more robust and comprehensive strategy, one that many of us in the field have been advocating for since almost a year ago, since January, when this first virus appeared. And that includes having testing, tracing, isolating capacity. That includes thinking about home tests for people to be able to know their status. That, that includes uh, supporting hospitals and, and also su uh, supporting PPE supply chains, as well as making sure that health departments at the state and local level have adequate funding to turn this vaccine vaccine into a vaccination program. Um, Amish, do, do we actually underestimate the amount of fake news that there's still out there from various parts of the world on where this originated from? I don't know how much time you're spending or how much time we should spend about, you know, to understand really where COVID-19 came from, how it originated, and how we can prevent the next disease. There is a lot of uh, fake news and a lot of mythology about this, but what we know so far is that this is a novel coronavirus. It likely originally came from bats, and there's an intermediate animal, which we don't know what it is, that likely allowed this virus to jump into humans. And when it found its way into humans, it was able to spread efficiently. I do think it's important to understand what that intermediate animal is because that helps us understand how coronaviruses infect humans because there are many, many coronaviruses in bats that are eventually going to find their way into humans. So we want to know the origin, but I don't think that there's any evidence for any nefarious origin of this, that, that there were clearly missteps that were made in China in recognizing this and reporting it and understanding how much human transmission was a factor. But we don't have any kind of idea that this was some kind of engine. There's no evidence that this was lab-based or engineered or anything like that. But I do think we need to know which animal it came from to further prepare us. There's also a number of reports saying that some of the first countries to deal with it, including Italy, had a very botched and you know, meaningless almost response to the virus. What's important next time around? The next time we're faced with this similar, a virus that's similar to this, do we need to isolate it first or is it the response? Like, what would you do differently? What we, we should do is just ask Taiwan what they did, ask South Korea what they did, because those are the shining examples. And in, in a nutshell, basically what they did was they met each case as they came. They jumped into action before they even had any confirmed cases, setting up testing, tracing, isolating ability, making sure that they could be, do as much di as many diagnostic tests as they needed, and speaking directly to the general public. We didn't do any of that. Italy didn't do that to, to much of the degree. And, and what you see is this very different way that Taiwan and South Korea have handled this and, and have been able to to really move back to some semblance of normalcy without a vaccine because they're able to keep cases to a minimum.